Hey guys, it's Josh with In Transit Studios. I've decided to put together my first video tutorial for a recent uh, talk that I put together on building a successful website presence. I had a surprising amount of people ask uh, for video of the presentation, but being that it's over an hour long, uh, that's gonna be a long video. So I figured what I would do is just condense this into around 10 minutes or so on the main steps that I recommend that you take to build a successful website presence. So building a successful website presence, I've condensed down to five major steps. Um, it's different for every company, but these are some basic overall principles that you can use to build your website and to make it work for you to get the most out of your investment. I will say before we start that a website is whatever you make it to be. If you design a cheap website that you wanna do it yourself, you're probably not gonna see a return as you would if you really invest in it and really help grow it and maintain it and, and really create a solid web presence. So my five major steps are one, plan it. Number two, build it out. And we're gonna go through these in a little more detail. Number three, share it. Now, it's interesting, most companies stop at number three here when it comes to sharing, but that's only halfway there in my mind. Uh, number four is to grow the website and finally to maintain it. So let's dive right in. Uh, number one, planning the website out. So this is gonna include your strategy. This is gonna include actually planning the website out, the, the layout, the menu, the pages, the, uh, the colors, the look and feel of the site. This is all going to be something you're gonna to wanna to plan out before a developer starts coding or actually works on the website. This is also the time that you wanna think about your demographic and you wanna to get to know who's gonna be looking at the website. What's their goal? Why are they gonna be there? Um, when you think about that, it's very important to put some call to actions into place. So creating strong call to actions. What those are, that's gonna be call, email, um, you know, if you're an automotive business, maybe it's request a quote, something like that. You wanna figure out what clients or customers are gonna to want to do when they hit your website with in mind that you only have a few seconds to grab their attention. So figuring out these main call to actions are gonna be crucial. Um, one good thing too in the planning stage to do is to decide on your search terms. So you wanna think about, you wanna really ask yourself the question, what are people gonna to search to find my website? And we'll utilize those as page terms and things like that for, for Google to help pull you up on organic listings. Um, creating the site verbiage and content. Your website developer can help you with this, but often it's good for the business owner or the business to think about what users and customers are gonna to wanna to read. Um, think about good content that's gonna be good for Google as well. And then finally, organizing site images, graphic, etc. cetera. Um, this is huge because if you don't plan this out and you don't have this ready before you start building the website, it can be a very long, complicated process. You can lose things in email threads and things like that. So you wanna to try to organize as much as possible before you begin to build the website, which is my next step, number two here, actually building it out. This little graphic here is actually website code. You more than likely don't wanna mess with that and that's why there's website developers and that's why I do what I do. So this is a, this is a gross summary of building out a website because it's extremely advanced to do it right. Um, this is where a lot of people have expertise. So um, this is where you're gonna need a, a web developer to actually partner with to actually build your website out. This is gonna be where you're gonna implement all plugins and functionality. So let's say you wanna add a calendar. Let's say you wanna add uh, an events manager or something like that. This is where you're gonna wanna develop all of that. Creating a, a basic SEO framework is gonna be your main search engine term. So you may create four to five pages with your primary services or a term that people could Google and that's gonna help find you. You wanna optimize the site for responsive design, which means it's gonna respond and look good on mobile and tablets. Um, this is huge Google Ding sites if they're not mobile friendly. So making sure your site is responsive and um, that you don't have to pinch and drag, that's gonna be huge. You wanna make sure all contact forms are working. This is a crucial one because when a site goes live, if that contact form or the notifications are going to your email, or I'm sorry, your spam, or they're just not going through at all, this needs to be worked out. So I recommend doing that before the site goes live. Making sure all final tweaks and additions are ready before going live, that's huge as well. There's nothing worse than going live and then doing edits and additions while the site is live. Because if somebody goes and it's a broken link or a broken page, it just looks really bad, especially if you're promoting the site. So speaking of promoting the site, number three, share. 
Nobody is going to know that your website is live unless you tell them. So as soon as a website is live, I recommend just shouting it to the world. Tell everyone you know that the site is live, making sure that Google was indexing your website. One thing to remember is that if you create a brand new website, your website's just a baby, basically. So you need to let Google know, hey, this website is here. And once you start driving traffic, Google will start finding it quicker. Um, so again, tell the world, utilize your social media. We live in a digital age where social media is free and you don't want to abuse it, but you can use it for your purposes of, of getting clients and connecting your following. So Facebook obviously is huge for businesses. LinkedIn, um, you know, if you're selling products and you're using Pinterest and Instagram, definitely get the word out on there. Let everyone know that you have a new website for them to check out. You can utilize an email newsletter. This is, again, something that can be taken advantage of and you need to be very careful. But if you have a new website that's going to benefit your, com your customers and something that, you know, maybe you could add coupons or, um, you know, give specials or things like that, I highly recommend doing that. Do it through your newsletter. Let them know. Check out our website. You know, here's our specials or something like that. It could be a great way to drive traffic. Word of mouth is the best referral still to this day. So let your friends and family know about your new website. Get their opinion. Hopefully it's constructive criticism. Um, but you can use that feedback to put towards additions and changes on your website moving forward. So definitely that's a great way to go. And then finally, if you're a part of any publications or groups, um, if, you're any, if you're in a networking group or maybe you're in a chamber of commerce, let everyone know. It's going to be a great way to drive traffic and this will help Google pick up your site quicker as well. Now again, this is not where it ends. This is the only halfway there. Growing the website is going to be crucial. Now, of course, this is just a visual aid. I don't recommend actually watering your computer, but I hope this shows you that, you know, once the website's live, you need to grow it. It is like a plan. It's something that Google needs to see as alive, as creepy as that sounds. Um, posting blogs is the number one way, number one best way to grow your website and to attract new customers and, and traffic. I know blogging sounds overrated, um, it is a, it's a time investment. It's, it takes work to do so. Sometimes it's maybe a part-time position. Maybe it's you clearing a certain amount of hours a week to, to dedicate to a blog, but this is the best way to grow a website. Uh, generally, companies with blogs will attract 30 to 40% more customers and traffic on their sites than their competitors. So it's well worth it. I, again, I know it's a lot of work, but it is, is well worth it to do so. As long as you're posting good blogs, you don't want to just put out junk. You want to take time to really develop some good content and things that are going to add value to your customers or potential customers. Share it on Facebook, all your media platforms you can. So investing in SEO, this is another, this is probably the main way that people look to grow their business online. Now, it's, it's useless to invest in SEO. First of all, you have a terrible website. So you want to make sure your website looks good. Otherwise, just going to be wasted money. SEO is going to vary depending on the business. So, for example, if you have an auto mechanic shop that is in a small town, they're probably going to be able to get higher up on Google relatively quickly with some basic SEO work. Um, if you're talking about in a large city, that's going to be a whole other ball game. It's going to take potentially thousands of dollars and a lot of SEO work to be able to utilize that. So no matter what your keyword, your target keywords are, I highly recommend investing in some sort of SEO, whether it's basic or advanced, to, to start getting some return out of that and getting some new clients through Google. Adding pages and new content, this is crucial as well. Again, Google wants to know that your site is alive and that it's not dead. If it's dead and nobody's doing anything with it and you're losing traffic, it's going to start going down on the Google ranking. So, you know, adding new pages, new services, things like that, great way to, to get some traffic. Adding new testimonials, this is huge. When people look at your website, they don't want to see a review or a testimonial that was from a year ago. They want to see that it's recent. So however you get reviews, whether you ask people to email you, um, whether you get them off Facebook, the best ways to get them through Google+, Plus. That's where you know Google's going to see your site and it's going to pull up those reviews automatically. So whatever you can do to get new reviews and post those on the website would be huge because when people go to your website, they're going to want to see reviews if they're not already looking at it beforehand. And then finally, if you're, a, if you're a business that has projects or recent work, make sure you build your site to be able to display that. Um, in Transit Studios, our site, for example, the majority of our views come through our blogs and then through our most recent projects. So we get a new project done, we post it to our social media, and it attracts a lot of new visitors and, and gets a lot of people excited. And it's something that's fresh and keeps it growing. 
Um, so definitely, you know, when you get new work, this is a good this is a good way to attract users who are coming back to your site as well, uh, just to get people wanting to check out your website. So those are kind of the main steps as far as growing your website. Fifth and finally here is to maintain your website. Most companies neglect this aspect of, you know, once their site goes live. When you have a website, you are vulnerable to getting hacked. Sites are getting hacked more and more now nowadays, so it's more important than ever to protect your website, to have a website security plan in place. Um, we developed a custom website plan specifically for this because we've seen sites getting hacked left and right. It's more important than ever to make sure you are secured. Um, keeping the site fresh. This is, gonna, this is similar to growing your website, but this may include changing out images, maybe some content. Um, you want to keep your website streamlined with your business. So let's say you have a couple new staff members that you add. Uh, or more importantly, if you have a couple staff members you let go, you're going to want to change your website immediately. We've even seen some situations where websites have outdated information like their address or phone numbers potentially from months or years ago and, and clients are confused. That's just you need to make sure that your website is streamlined and updated alongside your business. It's just as important. Using Google Analytics to analyze your traffic. If you're a part of our website security plan, you get full access to all this, but it's really cool. You can look at your site stats, your page views, your performance. You can see what users are doing when they get to your website. It's borderline creepy, but it is a great way to look at you know, how your website's doing and you can adjust things accordingly. So if your top five pages uh, through analytics are you know displayed on your site well, then we can adjust that. We can you know we can create the the site menu towards what's most popular, and then finally changing out passwords. I recommend doing this every three to six months. It's good to do it in all in any area of life, but especially for your website, you want to change your website logins to to limit the the possibility of a hack and and your hosting login as well. If you're using like GoDaddy or Bluehost or something like that. You want to change those out as, as often as possible just in case somebody gets a hold of them or already has a hold of them. So just to kind of review here, my five major steps in building a successful website presence. One is to plan it. Make sure it's already on paper before you hit the, the actual screen or the developer hits the screen. Two is to actually build it. This is where you need a partner. If you try to do it yourself, good luck. Um, I strongly recommend investing in it and making sure your presence is as professional as possible. Finally, sharing it, help grow your business. You just get the word out. You want as many people to know you want to drive traffic to your website to help Google find it. Growing your website, again, this is just the visual of showing that it need, a website needs nurtured. It needs constant care and attention to really have success online. And then finally, maintaining the website. This is going to include your website security plan, making sure that things are up to date and things like that. All of these things will equal a very happy website. So there are the five main steps that I recommend for building a successful online presence. I hope this has been valuable to you. Uh, again, this is just a recap. This is all extremely uh, summarized. So this is a very in-depth process to do it correctly. But hopefully this just gives you an idea of some of the major steps to effectively build an online presence. Hope you can use this. Of course, if myself or Intransit Studios can help you out in any way, let us know. And I'll probably do another one of these here soon.